Hello everybody, I hope that you're well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. I have been traveling the world and documenting it for over 10 years now and I don't really think twice when I go through an airport. But you know what? They can be overwhelming and confusing to navigate. So if you're new to traveling, don't panic. I hope I can help you in this video understand airports just a little bit better so you can prepare, know what to expect, feel comfortable with your journey because that's how it should be. Catching flights is exciting. So let's start before we even leave the house. In fact, let's start a few days before we even fly. What I always like to do is install the app of the airline that I'm flying with. What you can do is add in your flight, normally using your email confirmation reference and your last name, and then you can literally see all of your flight details there on your phone in a really nice looking layout, and it normally gives you a nice little countdown for your flight as well. If you're lucky, you may actually be able to check into your flight via this app, which is super handy, because once you've done that, you then have your boarding pass right there on your phone, you can add it to your Apple wallet, and your whole flying experience is just chef's kiss. If you can't use the app to check in, have a go at doing it on your desktop or on the airline's website. And then if you get your boarding pass up on your desktop, have a go at sending it to your phone either via WhatsApp, email, or maybe even airdrop, however you like. And I'll be honest, I never do this, but it is also a good idea to print off a physical copy as well, just in case something happens to happen to your phone or it runs out of battery. But if you do forget to print it off, don't worry, you don't need to print it off. I feel like the necessity of printing off a boarding pass is like a myth of the airport. Dads. If for whatever reason you cannot check in online before your flight, do not panic because you can always do this at the check-in counter at the airport and actually sometimes airlines even require you to do it at the airport because they may need to check certain documents or whatever reason that they have. And on that topic, make sure that you have all of the documents that you need for not only checking into this flight but what you may need when you get to the other side. This could be a confirmation of your visa if you needed a pre-approved visa to get into the country that you're going to. Have a PDF copy on your phone and consider printing it off. It could be pre of your onward travel from the country. If you have a return flight or an ongoing travel confirmation, make sure that you have screenshotted this onto your phone so that you have it available to access offline to show them and consider even printing it off as well. But the most important document of all, your passport. Don't forget it. And think about where you're going to store your passport whilst moving through the airport because you want to have it somewhere that's nice and secure, but also somewhere that's very accessible because you're gonna be wanting to get that in and out throughout your airport transition. It is also a very good idea to have Surfshark downloaded onto your device ready to use ahead of your airport visit. Surfshark are a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network and they are also kindly the sponsors of today's video. A VPN turns your public Wi-Fi connection into a private one and this is particularly useful at the airport because when you are connected to the airport's public Wi-Fi network, your device is actually at risk of being hacked through that connection. That's right, it's scary, but if you have Surfshark switched on whilst you are browsing, it acts as a virtual shield on that connection so that none of those evil hackers can get in. It's also going to allow you to change the virtual location of your device to pretty much anywhere in the world. So when you're away but you're wanting to access Netflix from back home or you're wanting to access a certain service or media that's only available in certain countries, with the click of a button you can select a country on Surfshark where that media or service is available. Surfshark is one of the only VPNs that gives you access on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account and you can get an amazing deal if you use my code back packing where you can get a whole three months for free you can click the link in the description for that as well now I have made hundreds of packing videos with my tips trials and tribulations to becoming a smarter packer but I won't go into all of those in this video but what I will say though is that it's very important that you are aware of exactly how much luggage you are allowed to bring onto your flight and make sure that you have stuck to this limit before you even leave for the airport you will need a tape measure and you will need a luggage weighing scale I will link both of these products down in the description if you don't have them so that you can make sure that your luggage is within the required dimensions but more importantly is within the weight limit. Now some airlines may be more lenient than others when it comes to sticking to these rules but if you are a nervous flyer I just recommend sticking to the rules don't try to bend them that's gonna make your life much more stressful than it needs to be. If you are checking in a piece of luggage and you have an air tag or any kind of 
tracker for that reason, just pop it in your suitcase. Because it's quite nice to know that your suitcase has arrived in the destination country when you are waiting for it on arrival. Or if, God forbid, the airline does lose your luggage, you can tell them exactly where it is because you can literally locate it on your phone. Okay, so you've got all of your documents, you've packed all of your bags, you've potentially even checked in, and it is now time to head to the airport for your flight. The recommended times to arrive at the airport is three hours prior if you are flying internationally and two hours prior if you are flying domestically. These are really nice, comfortable times and even now as an experienced traveller, I do try to arrive this early ahead of my flight because you just never know if you're gonna run into any hiccups that may take a bit longer than usual and you don't wanna be stressed. And before we even get into getting to the airport, let's do a check to make sure that you're actually getting to the right airport. That's right, some cities, in fact, many cities have several airports. You're flying from London, that's great, but also very unhelpful. Are you flying from Luton, Stansted, Heathrow, Gatwick, City? You're probably not, but which one are you flying from? It will specify this on your flight confirmation, so do check and make sure that you head to the right one. And then, just to make things slightly more complicated, many airports have multiple terminals, so you have to make sure that you're heading to the right one of those as well. Again, this information will be on your flight confirmation, so make sure that you have checked. And then when it comes to actually travelling to the airport, however long you think it's going to take you to get there, Add on one hour. I'm not even kidding. Hopefully, this will just mean that you arrive at the airport another extra hour early. Fine. Airports are great places to hang out and have a coffee. But do you know what's not fun? Not allowing that extra hour and getting caught in unexpected traffic, or your train to the airport gets cancelled, or you realise halfway to the airport that you've left your passport at home and you've got to go back, and you haven't left any buffer time. So you are stressed. No one needs that. Add the extra hour, treat yourself to a nice caramel latte on arrival. If you are driving to the airport and you're going to be leaving your car there, make sure that you have pre-booked that parking, my friends. There are normally a few different options, short stay being closer to the terminal but more expensive, long stay is cheaper but then you will have to probably use their shuttle system to actually get to the terminal. Do your research of this beforehand, it should always give you an estimated time of how long it will take you to park up and actually reach the terminal, so make sure that you're factoring that time into your airport journey. Then when you do park, take a photo of your car, what car park is it in, what section is it in, what row is it in, even write it down in the notes of your phone because you will forget. You will when you return and I don't want you to forget so take a photo and write it down in the notes in your phone. All right we've made it to the airport lads, hopefully the correct airport and hopefully the correct terminal and hopefully with lots of time still on our hands. We've got our luggage, we've got our travel documents, we walk through the big slidey doors into the air conditioning what do we do now? Now, if you have already checked in online and you have your boarding pass on your phone or printed off and you have no bags to check in, hold tight for a second because you get to skip this next step. But if you do not have any or one of the above, your next step is to make your way to the airline's check-in desk or bag drop-off. Look out for a large board of digital information because this is going to tell you where you need to go. On this large board, first look for the departing time of your flight. This is what this list is ordered in, is the time. So you can look down for the time of your flight. When you've found that, you're gonna gaze your eyes across. You're gonna look out for your specific flight number and the airline that you're you're flying with and once you have located that you can gaze your eyes across again and it should tell you the number of your check-in counter it's normally something like a2 b53 to 57 you are then going to look all around you for some big numbers and letters which are going to guide you to your check-in counter if you are confused don't hesitate to ask anyone around you or you can visit the airport help desk which is usually somewhere close by and they would be happy to help you out so you found your check-in desk or row of check-in desks usually you'll have banners and flags and signs with the name of the airline that you're flying with. So you're going to queue there. Sometimes a well-dressed member of airline staff may interrupt you and say that you have to use a touchscreen machine to plug in your details and perhaps print off various documents that you need before joining the queue for backdrop. Now this queue that you join could take a while, but that's okay. This is one of the many reasons that we've arrived very early to the airport, we factored this in. You could be in the queue for five minutes, you could be in the queue for an hour, you don't really know. When you get to the front of the queue, it is your turn to see one of the lovely flight attendants and you should give them your passport. Here they might check your documents, weigh your bags, send off any bags that you're going to be checking in. They will give you your boarding pass if you still need it and send you on your way. With any luck, they might point you in the right direction, but if they don't, you may be screaming inside of your head, which way? 
Yay! You must now follow signs for any or all of the following. Departures, security, passport control, gates. If you see a sign with any of those words, follow it, that's the right direction. Depending on the airport, you may have passport control or security first. If you have passport control first, that's fab, or you do join the queue. When it's your turn, just hand over your passport. They may ask you to take off your glasses or your hat. Whatever you do, don't take any photos though, because you will get told off or worse. And then at some point you will head through security. This is where they're going to check all of the bags that you're gonna be bringing onto the plane and also check you. A pretty universal rule is that the liquids that you bring on, not a singular bottle can be over 100 milliliters. So if you've got a water bottle and there's still water in there you've got to drink it up real quick i don't care if there's wine in there you're drinking it before you go through security and they may ask you to put all of your liquids into a little plastic bag that's very normal you will most likely have to take your laptop or any larger electronics out of your bag and put them into a nice box give yourself a little pat down to make sure that you yourself haven't left anything in your pocket stick it all in the boxes which are going to go through the conveyor belt scanner and then you yourself are going to go through a big human scanner you will be nervous for this even if you know you're not carrying a bomb but don't worry this is a normal universal feeling we always feel like we're criminals when we walk through the human scanner even though we know we're not so once you've gone through the human scanner someone will tell you whether you're good or not good to go and if when you go through the human scanner you do make it beep it doesn't necessarily mean that you are a criminal but they may ask to pat you down and I don't think, no matter how many times I go through the human scanner, my heartbeat is always like this when I'm going through. And like, I always kind of like rush through, like just hoping nothing will happen. But anyway, that that's a normal feeling, don't worry. So once you've gone through the human scanner, had a potential pat down, you will meet your bags on the other side that went through on the conveyor belt. If the security staff have seen something in the x-ray in your bag that they think is a bit questionable, they may pull you aside and ask for you to open it so that they can see. Do comply with everything that they ask you to to do and don't take any pictures or videos because again you will get in trouble or worse. Now depending on the airport it's possible that the next thing you come across in the airport gauntlet is duty free. You may feel like you've just walked into a department store against your will. You may feel happy to be there. You may want to try on some makeup or maybe spritz yourself with some perfume. Do as you please. Most people like to buy cheap booze. Just be aware that if you do buy anything that's over a hundred milliliters you may get it confiscated if you have a connecting flight after the flight that you've just taken. And also, if duty-free happens to come before going through security, that generally shouldn't happen, but sometimes it does, don't buy anything over 100 mil. You will then find yourself in a magical place called the departure lounge where you can relax a little bit, but not too much. Remember those big digital boards that we saw when we first entered the airport? We're now going to locate one of those again because that is going to tell us which gate that we need to go to. It will still be a list of the flights in the order of the time, but when you're gazing along the board, this time looking at your flight, at the end, you're going to see the gate that you need to get to. If the board is not showing your gate information yet, Hurrah, you are early. Hopefully it will tell you at what time that they are going to supply you with the gate information because then you know exactly how much time you have to gallivant off into the departure lounge, go shopping, eat food, do whatever you please. Some airports are better equipped than others for this leisure experience, but whatever you do, just don't lose track of time. When your gate does show up on the digital board, it's a good idea to make your way to that gate as soon as possible because sometimes it can take like 15 minutes to walk to your gate, and I'm not even joking. I hope you wore your comfy shoes to the airport. Now, sometimes airports have additional security to get into your gate. Not always, but sometimes, which is another reason why it's a good idea to allow a lot of time for this, rather than fannying about in the departure lounge for any longer. Or sometimes they stick the passport control between the departure lounge and the gate. And sometimes that has cues. Again, another reason to head there as soon as you know what your gate number is. I would love to tell you that there was a one fits all method for navigating airports, but there's really not. Even after all the years that I've been traveling, I still get surprised with some airports at 
what things they put at different stages of the process. Best thing to do though is just to allow plenty of time so that you can get to your gate as comfortably early as possible. Because then, once you have arrived at your gate, you can relax. There should be seats for you to sit on there and this is the final place that you need to wait before catching your flight. You will be made aware when your plane starts to board. Just keep your eyes and your ears peeled. Try not to fall asleep. You will see a rush of people trying to get on the plane first when they first announce boarding. And if you only have with you an item of luggage that you can fit underneath the seat in front, then you can sit back and relax and maybe even laugh at all the people fighting for their lives to get to the front of the queue. You are in no rush. However, if you have what is referred to as a cabin bag, this is one of the ones that will go in the overhead lockers of the plane because it's just too big to go under the seat in front of you, you may want to consider joining the hustle and bustle of people trying to get on the plane first. Why? Because you see, especially with smaller planes, there is often not enough room in the overhead compartment for everyone's luggage on the plane. Meaning, if you are one of the last to board, they may not have space for your bag. And the solution is either your bag being placed very far away from your seat, which makes it a bit difficult when you've landed trying to retrieve that again. Or they will take that bag away from you and put it in the hole. And you don't have to pay extra for this. And honestly, it's not terrible if you already have checked in bags, so you're already gonna be waiting at the luggage carousel on the other side anyway. But if you are traveling hand luggage only, this is like a dagger to the heart to have to put your bag into the hold when you did not have to. It's essentially defeating why you go hand luggage only in the first place. So as you're boarding, the staff will obviously want to see and scan your boarding pass. It's a really good idea to have your passport out handy as well because they will want to check your identification and you will then follow where you are being directed onto the plane. Sometimes there is just a nice tunnel which takes you directly onto the plane itself. Sometimes you will be led outside and you're then literally walking up to the plane, up some stairs. Or sometimes you will even be led outside onto a bus which will then take you to the plane. But don't panic about going in the wrong direction here. There's really only one way that they ever allow you to go, so you can't mess up. Just keep that boarding pass handy at all times because the flight crew may ask to see it again and you can also use it to remind yourself of where you're sitting. But then you are on a plane and you can relax now. And that is where I'm going to end this video. I mean, I feel like I could go on and tell you exactly what to expect when you get on a plane, what is good plane etiquette, what are the unspoken rules, what is not Normal, what is not normal. Let me know if that is a video that you guys would be interested in seeing. I hope you enjoyed this video or perhaps learned something new or perhaps feel a little bit more at ease or in the know about what your airport experience is going to be like. Or maybe you are already an airport veteran just making sure that your airport experiences are the same as mine. In fact, if that is the case, let me know. Have I missed anything out that you think that the airport newbies need to know? If you take anything from this video, it's just to give yourself plenty of time. If you have your passport and plenty of time anything is possible kind of i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye